Now, we have the management of uh, Lupin joining us, as uh, promised. Lupin has emerged as the first generic player to get the U.S. FDA nod to sell the billion-dollar respiratory drugs, Piriva generic, in the U.S. This approval has come through earlier than expected, and the key positive is that this is a limited competition drug for the next three years. To understand the opportunity and how much could it contribute to Lupin sales, we have Ramesh Swaminathan, Executive Director and Global Chief Financial Officer, uh, head corporate affairs at the company. Ramesh, good morning. Great to have you with us here on the program here at CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much, Prashant. This side, uh, congratulations first up on this. Uh, the market's very excited, as you can see. Uh, could you tell us when do you launch this drug and uh, could you estimate the opportunity for the company? What would you net, uh, you know, over the, over the next couple of... Uh, say, uh, you know, after launch the first year, what would be uh, net earnings for Lupin from this drug? Uh, firstly, thank you for having us on. Uh, this is obviously a very important development. Uh, this is something which we have been expecting for quite some time. Uh, it's about $1.2 billion in terms of size. So, uh, and of course, minus, in fact, the discounts that we give uh, on this, as you would know, with the market itself. It could certainly be a very meaningful addition to our overall portfolio in America. Um, and uh, for sure, we think it will certainly move the needle when it comes to margins and the like. Uh, in terms of the launch timeline, we think yeah, we would be in a position to launch it in Q2 of uh, of this uh, of this fiscal. All right. Uh, good good morning, Mr. Swaminathan. So Q2, we've got that uh, the time horizon out there, but give us a rough number in terms of estimated sales for the first year. That's FY24. What kind of a number are you looking at? The street is working with 30, 40 million dollars odd, and 100 million dollars. Do you think by 2025? I think I don't want to go down the path of actually conjecturing on numbers and the like. Um, as you would recognize, it's a pretty large drug. It's very important. Uh, and we do believe being the uh, you know, only uh, player in the market you know, from a generic perspective, um, it, we would be able to get uh, pretty good market shares and, of course, overall volumes and concomitantly the sales as well. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Swaminathan, hi, good morning. Uh, there are also estimates on you know, roughly how much price erosion uh, you know, a generic drug like this would see. Some estimates say maybe 30, 35 percent, uh, but your best place to answer that. So do tell us. And I think it will be premature for me to talk about it and perhaps, uh, you know, not appropriate because given the fact that we are the only player, you know, so obviously it is going to be lower than potentially the generic, the, you know, the innovator itself. But uh, we do have, uh, you know, the ability to price uh, and we would, of course, do what is necessary to get us a good, uh, what is absolutely, uh, you know, um, in the keeping of things when it comes to, in fact, being the only player in the market. Okay, so just a sense of, uh, you know, timelines. The launch is going to be by second quarter. Uh, by when do you think you can fully take it, uh, you know, to the market? By when do, should we see the, the entire potential flowing in? Yes, the ramp up would happen. It will happen over a period of time. Um, we think it will certainly have the potential to do very well, being the only player. Um, but I don't want to speculate on, in fact, the, the way volumes would turn, o would turn out over, over time. Mr. Uh, Ramesh, uh, so what would be the factors which, uh, which, which are keeping you from being, being, uh, giving, <laughs> giving us a number? Could, uh, you know, Nithya Balakrishnan of Bernstein was with us earlier. She was saying that, uh, you know, in many cases what happens is the, innovate, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, innovator themselves drops prices quite a bit. Uh, we, don't, we don't, as of now, know of any other filers uh, for this. Uh, perhaps there aren't any. Uh, but uh, are those risks as you see them? No, it's just that, um, you, know, uh, you, you know, as you yourself said, there are several moving parts and so on. You know, it's, I think it's fair to actually, you know, uh, surprise the market. And to the extent, um, we're just being conservative in saying that, uh, you know, we would get a very good market share. Um, but we don't want to speculate on, in fact, the volumes or the sales for that matter at this stage. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Swaminathan, give us a sense of, uh, you know, really what the rest of the market opportunity is looking like. Uh, if I have the right numbers, I think you were at uh, your U.S. sales for FI23 were somewhere in the vicinity of about 600 million. Um, so with this huge blockbuster drug coming in, tell us more about the, the rest of the pipeline as well and how you're looking at the U.S. market. Uh, what is your take on, say, you know, overall competition, uh, pricing pressure in generics and uh, what the year ahead looks like to you? Well, too many questions in the same breath, uh, but I'll try to answer that. In terms of uh, our run rate, we are doing about $170 million on a quarterly basis. Uh, with the addition of products like Dernavir, Verniclin, and, and now uh, Spiriva, you know, so, uh, you know, we would certainly do much better than that. Uh, and 
And so obviously the, the, you know, the, the current year looks pretty promising with these with the newer drugs that we're speaking about. Uh, and going forward, as we have always spoken, we have a pretty strong pipeline lined up uh, lined up on in the on the respiratory front for sure, and and the complex injectables. We've been working on quite a few of those, um, and the pipeline. You know, so uh, uh, you know, in terms of um, the biosimilars going forward, the current pipeline in terms of OST, um, the inline portfolio. So we are confident about um, you know the uh, immediate future in America, and obviously this has a pretty big big impact when it comes to the you know the overall performance of Lupin itself. All right, uh, Mr. Swaminathan, you know, uh, from around $170 million, or the street is banking in that, given the kind of approvals you go, you gradually move to around $200 million on a quarterly basis. Now, margins have been a key focus area as well. And the worst of margins appears to be behind you. The question is, by the end of this year itself, can you get closer to around the high teens, the 20% margin odd mark? Uh, could you tell us when do you get back to the 20? I, I was just looking at the last many quarters, you haven't hit that 20% margin. The last time I think it was June 2021. So by exit rate for quarter four, do you get to 20% again? As you very correctly pointed out, you know, so essentially we have been working on a host of initiatives, you know, essentially, uh, you know, when it comes to cost, uh, you know, cost reduction in terms of various, um, you know, initiatives, uh, the factory level, at the R&D level and the like, and of course the SG and dispense. Um, and there has been a lot of inefficiencies that we have uh, corrected over the next, over the last um, several quarters. There's some more to come for sure. Uh, but the top line certainly, you know, would make a huge impact when it comes to, in fact, the, the you know, the, the bottom line, you know, which is the better margins also. Uh, and with products like Spiriva coming in, we can only move for, you know, uh, to a higher level. Uh, we have guided for, uh, you know, a, a run rate of uh, over 18% by the end of this fiscal. Um, so our aspiration at the very least would, would be to get to that for, and, and perhaps higher as, as we go by. So is 20% an outside chance that we see it by the end of this year? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, an outside chance for sure. Uh, Ramesh, since we have you on the program, uh, I, I have to ask you whether, uh, if, and this is important because, I mean, uh, some will say, well, this is a one-off opportunity and the broader pressures, pricing pressures in the U.S. generic market are still there. I remember uh, many months ago when you joined us, you, you said that the U.S. generic market was uh, like, uh, like, like El Dorado. I think that's what you said. And you said, and now there is a drought. Uh, is it? Is it, is it getting a little better overall? Will it continue to get a little better? Have you bottomed out uh, as far as uh, pricing in the U.S. is concerned? You know, in a general sense, there is still a lot of pressure when it comes to, in fact, the OST business itself. You know, I did speak about the fact that what was uh, a feast for quite some time has now turned out to be a bit of a famine because of the intensity of competition and because of the fact that there has been um, consolidation of the channel partners leading to price erosion of a higher magnitude. Um, and, well, the pressure is on, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of steadying at uh, the, you know, uh, um, you know, I would say higher single digit numbers. Uh, uh, it really is a function of, in fact, uh, individual products, you know, certain products kind of erode faster, certain products erode much lower. So it is, uh, it is really a function of that. Um, but as with, um, you know, in so far as we are concerned, we're kind of pivoting to more complex, uh, you know, products. You know, like, um, as you say, it's pretty well, the inhalations portfolio, uh, the injectables portfolio, the more complex ones there, biosimilars and the like, and for sure, speciality at some point of time. And that, I think, is what will actually move the needle in terms of, uh, in terms of margins over time. Mm, absolutely. And I think the market's, uh, you know, been realizing that as, as well, Mr. Swaminathan, and stock's been flying, going through the roof last couple of months. Uh, so, uh, so let me ask you, uh, when you talk about Moving up that value chain, getting you know eventually towards uh, specialty products. Uh, this approval came in slightly earlier than some of the market participants had kind of penciled in. So maybe it'll give people hope that we get more approvals you know earlier than anticipated. When you talk about your pipeline, uh, which are the next main ones uh, that you're anticipating? Anything more this year, for instance? And when you talk about uh, you know the longer term outlook on let's say specialty, more complex generics. Uh, are we talking FY, uh, you know, 25? Uh, any, any new launches there? You know, for the current year, we uh, and really come out saying that uh, we'll have Darunavir, which is also an exclusive product for us. We have Arnaclin, um, which is also an important product. You know, Spiriva, the, you know, from the respiratory portfolio. We already have Albutol, which is doing still pretty well. Um, we have, in fact, perhaps, uh, you know, the highest component of, uh, um, you know, the, the number of products that we have on the respiratory front across uh, you know, um, and this is actually across the world. Uh, we also have Foster, you know, which has been launched in uh, in in Europe. 
Um, so we have been working on, in fact, uh, a broad range of products, so to speak, you know, and um, and that is what will actually pay us dividends. Uh, equally, we've been doing a lot of stuff when it comes to complex injectables, you know, so, uh, um, and of course, the biosimilars portfolio. We already have a few products uh, when it comes to the biosimilars, you uh, know, still early days, uh, but we do, um, you know, we're building up a, a, you know, a pipeline for the future, and, and that is what we actually deliver. You know, Mr. Swaminathan, because of all that you're saying, expectations run high, right? And, you know, some of the expectations say that your quarterly revenue run rate, U.S. revenues, should probably improve. You just told us it's around 170 million right now, that it should be northwards of 200 million uh, in the very near future. Uh, what's the outlook? Can you do that uh, this year itself? There is what's the going new to be quarterly price, run rate? In so far as the OIF is concerned, there is going to be price erosion, or at least uh, not perhaps to the same extent as in the past, but it is certainly going to be price erosion. Uh, but uh, as you pivot to more complex ones as uh, of the like that you're seeing today, uh, you would certainly see this cropping, you know, going up. Um, and it is obviously within the realms of possibility when it comes to the, the kind of uh, volumes, uh, the sales numbers that you're speaking about. Okay. All right. Uh... Ms. Swaminathan, just one quick query. Uh, any more pre-approvals, any pre-inspections will be there for Spireva or it's all cleared as of now? Because that's a couple of questions that we've been getting as well. No, from our perspective, it is all in the clear. It's all clear. Yeah. All right, uh, <clears throat> Ramesh, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. And appreciate you joining in uh, with uh, that you. perspective. And uh, good luck uh, as you roll out that drug from the second quarter of F524, as you said.